Hi, today we're going to talk about the basics of creating a Google form for the sake of making a quiz or for a survey. So I'm in my Google Drive. Um, to get to Google Forms, the easiest way is to go up to where it says new in the upper left corner there and click one time. If I scroll down, I don't see the word forms here anywhere, so I just go to more and I just, as I hover over more, up comes the second drop down and there are my Google Forms. I'm going to click once on that. Up comes our blank Google Form. Um, I'm going to call this Google Form English Practice. And practicing our food vocabulary. Um, so it is nice to have a name for your form. This is what your the person taking your, your, your quiz or your survey is going to see. And it's nice to have a description. This description could be a lot longer. You know, could include who the contact, if they have questions, whatever, depending on what you need them to do. Um, notice if I go up to where it says Untitled Form, this is actually where the name of the document is going to be. So this is what is seen by the person taking the quiz but this is what's going to show up in my drive list. So sometimes it's helpful to change to have the name be something a little different because maybe you have a lot of forms in there that are called something similar. Um, but the, just so you know, if you click one time up there, it will automatically take whatever this is. And then if I want to add something to it, I'm going to say May um, 18. Okay, so now I know when I come back and see that in my drive that this was the May 18th practice for the person taking the quiz, that doesn't really matter because they got it whenever they got it. Um, okay, so we're going to start off with an untitled question. Notice that this is the default. Whenever you start a quiz, it's going to be purple. There's going to be one question in there. The default is going to be multiple choice. If you click on this little arrow, you're going to see all your different question types. Um, Google will also guess sometimes what your question type is, so you can always manually change that, but just know that that's how that works. So I'm going to start off by, um, the question is, which one is an apple? Okay, and I'm actually, just to kind of take us to a slightly advanced place, um, here are my options. So option one, if I want to, I can make this an image instead of uh, words. So you could type words in here, or you can click on this little icon that means image. I'm going to um, search. You may have an image in your head already. I'm going to look up Apple. And I'm going to take this image. Okay. Um, if you had if you'd done the search in the, in earlier and you would have had all these, these images in your own folders, then you could have just taken them from there. Okay, so this is option one. Um, we're going to add an option two, and again, we're going to do another image. So we're going to make this one a cabbage. Let's see. Oh, cauliflower is fun. Let's go with this one. So it's putting the images in there for me. And I'm actually going to go ahead and name these A and B. We'll add one more. C, and we're going to add another image. And this time we'll put in a tomato. Don't make it too confusing, but I want another red fruit. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have three choices there. I want to make this question required, means that people cannot not answer before they can submit. Um, now, down here we have a couple of other icons. This is our trash icon if I wanted to delete this question. This is our copy question, which is helpful if we were going to make a question that's very similar to this, right? So for the sake of showing you that, I'm going to click on that. 
What's nice here is, for example, we change this to, which one is a cabbage? And we might even take this guy out and add in a carrot. I want a single carrot. Interesting, difficult to find. Let's go back up. All right. Okay, so now we have our three images and the question was very similar. So just save me time, not have to change everything around, right? Um, if you wanted to make a new question that was a completely different type, then you can always click on this plus sign. So that always leads to making a new question. The copying questions is really just for when you have a question that's very similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and click plus, and then we're gonna scroll down. So here's our new question type. Notice that whenever you click the plus sign, the new question is going to show at the bottom. And I just realized that I wanna ask people what their name is. So I'm gonna ask, what is your name? Notice that Google guessed that this is a short answer for me, which is actually true. But the downside here is that I actually want this to be the first question. <clears throat> so if you'll notice, whenever I click into a question, this question is the live question right now, and I know that because there's a blue line down the side and there's a shadow below it. If I click into this question above it, it now has the blue line and the shadow. When, the, when I have this question live, I can click on these six little dots that allow me, and you can see I have a little a four pointy arrow there, that usually indicates you can move. So if I click here, I can pull this all the way to the top because I do want this to be the first question. Um, okay, so now I have my three questions and I'm feeling pretty good about it. I want to go take, your, take you up here to see that we have these icons across the top. Um, the color palette, for example, right now the default with every form is purple, as is the logo for Google Forms, so that's helpful to remember. But I don't want my forms to all be purple. I like to have some variety there. I could, because this is about fruits and vegetables so far, maybe green would be fun. But I'm actually going to go out here and see if we can find something even more fun. So we have work and school, illustrations, birthday, food and dining. Let's see what we have here. Um, Let's use this one. Now you have a lot of other options here. Um, other is more graphic than illustrative. Uh, and you can also upload photos from your own Google albums. So if you wanted a picture of the class or something like that, you could do that from there. But I've clicked on this one. I'm going to hit select. And now you'll see it changes the whole color um, scheme. Um, and if I scroll up, you get a little bit more of the picture. OK, so that was this paint palette, right? Now we have the preview. This is actually going to open another tab and let me see what the quiz will look like from the student's perspective. So this is the quiz that they're going to receive, right? It, you can see it changed where they put the fruits and vegetables a little easier to look at. Uh, and then there's submit at the end. Um, and I will say for multiple choice, I would normally do four choices, but I didn't have the wherewithal to do that. Um, and notice what I see here is that I did manage to make these required. So I have this nice little red asterisk, but I do want to require the name. So I'm actually going to go back up here and you can see I have the tabs are still open. If I click back on the other tab. Let's go ahead and remember to make this required, uh, which is another reason why I like the copy questions often, because otherwise I forget to, to make my required ones. Um, so that was our palette, our preview, and now I want to go to settings. So the default and settings there are three tabs across the top. Um, the first tab looks at general information. I never use collect email addresses here. If I wanted to collect someone's email address, I would put it in as a question. 
but if you did collect email addresses, you could, you could I think, limit who can see um, the quiz totally, and it just makes it feel a bit like a logging in process for the test taker or quiz taker, which is a, is a turn off. Um, you could limit this to one response, which means that on any device, a respondent could only do it one time. It would not let them do it a second time. However, if they move to another device, they could do it a second time. And if you ever find yourself having people maybe sharing devices, so you're having two or three people maybe use the same device to respond to the quiz, you, you also don't want to use this. So very rarely do I use this. If I was being very, um, you know, if the quiz was very important, then I would have some other ways to manage who was responding to the quiz, like giving their whole name or something like that. Um, can they edit after submitting? In this case, no, you submit it one time. Uh, do you, do I want to let them see all like charts and information from other people's responses? And I'm not going to do that for a quiz. If this was a survey, that might be interesting, right? But for the quiz, I'm not going to do that. If I had made any changes here, I'd have to click on save, but I didn't make any changes. So now I'm going to click over to presentation. What's powerful about presentation, particularly for us always, is this ability to change the confirmation message. This is the message that the quiz taker gets after they've submitted their quiz. And it can be nice to get a little bit more of a um, personalized, somewhat personalized message, right? So um, great work on your food vocabulary this week, right? So it just kind of, un, uh, again, personalizes it slightly. Um, show progress bar is useful if this is quite long or if you have multiple sections. We didn't talk about that yet, but there's a way to make multiple sections in your quiz and that or survey and that basically acts like separate pages. Um, and if people can't tell how long it is by looking at it, they, they need to know maybe at the bottom that there's a progress bar saying, kind of showing, indicating how far along they are in the process, which is very good practice. Um, shuffle question order. Again, if this was a kind of very important quiz and you have people sitting next to each other, maybe you want to shuffle the order. Again, never been useful to me, but that's what that would be. And because I did change this down here, I do have to click save, which will take me out of my settings. So I'm going to have to go back up here and click on settings again, because I want to take us over here to the last tab, quizzes. So this is actually a quiz, right? We could have done a survey that was just asking information. There'd be no wrong or right answer. But if we wanted to do a quick check-in every morning or after a certain vocabulary uh, practice or something like that, then we want to have a quiz. And this allows us to have Google's artificial intelligence score this for us and get, give the uh, quiz taker their their results immediately after they submit. So if I go ahead and make this a quiz, so everything is grayed out right now because I haven't made it a quiz. If I click up here in the gray area, it now becomes a quiz. Um, the default is immediately after the submission, they'll have the option of clicking on, so, on a button that will take them to their scores, uh, which I like, and I usually use that one. But if you needed to review, you know, if you had them entering a lot of writing or something, you might want to review it, so you could change that. Um, respondents can see which questions they missed, which questions they got correct, and the point values. I'm going to take get rid of point values, but you could totally have points assigned, right? So if you did point values, you'd have to assign points to each of your questions. Okay, I'm clicking save. Now, when we get back to our regular page, suddenly now we have answer key here, right? So for what is your name, there's no wrong or right answer. So I'm going to skip that one, but I'm going to go down to the next question. So I'm just clicking anywhere in the question and now I'm in there. And if I scroll to the bottom of that question, here's our answer key. So I click on answer key, which is the correct answer for this one, which is an apple. That will be A. Um, so I scroll down and now I get this little thing that says add answer feedback. This is where you get to write in the message they'll receive if they get the answer right or wrong. So I'm going to click on add answer feedback. You can see I have incorrect answer and correct answer. So this is what they're going to see if they if they gave a wrong answer. So I'm going to say sorry the correct answer was A and that's kind of why it's important to add that A up there with the with the pictures so that you can um, refer to them here, right? Or the you could say the first picture too. Sorry, the correct answer was A. 
I'm going to save. Well, I'm actually going to go over to correct answers now. Good job. A is the correct answer. So this is just affirming it. Again, if it was a much more complex question, this could be, you could write a lot more about it. You could even have links and even videos in here. So now again, I'm going to click save. So now the correct answer and the incorrect answers are there. I'm going to do the same thing for the next question. Again, I just click anywhere in the question. It becomes the focus question. We got our blue line down the side here and our little shadow underneath. We click answer key. The correct answer for cabbage is B. And now as I scroll down, I can do the answer feedback, the incorrect answer, or the answer to the response to an incorrect answer is sorry, the correct answer is B. And actually I'm gonna cheat and copy all of this. And then for the correct answer, I'll say, great job, comma, all right, the correct answer is B, save. So now we have our two questions with their correct answers in there. Um, you'll notice because we're inside the um, answer editing piece to it, I can't actually change the question at this point. If I wanted to do that, I would go back to edit question. All right, that takes us back to our old view. And when you're in that view, you don't see the correct answers. All right, so just remember if you need to see those, it's the answer key again. So answer key lets us see all the answer information. Edit question lets us see the question as it was when we originally created it, if we need to edit it. Um, so we haven't talked about these icons down the side. This is to add a new question. This is to add a title or description to a question. This is to add an image. So we added images as the answers, but you could have had an image as the question. Um, so you could have had an apple up here and then had these be the words, for example. You could embed a video uh, so they could watch the video and answer questions about it right below it. And this is the section piece I was mentioning earlier, which kind of creates pages within your quiz or your, your survey. So our, we're pretty happy with this. Again, I could go back and look at my um, preview Right, it looks the same as it did because I have nothing that I've done is visible from the outside. It's when someone takes it now that they'll get the right answer or wrong answer. Um, so I want to send this to my students or I want to put the link up on my website or send them a text or whatever. This is not the link to send up here at the top in the Omnibox. This is not the link that you want to send them. Go back to your quiz, to your back end of the quiz, and notice this big button up at the top that says send. Right. I don't know why they use send here when they use share and all the other things in Google, but anyway, we're going to send. So click on send. As is typical with a lot of Google stuff, we the default here is to email it to someone. So if you knew someone's email address, you could put it in here. The challenge with that, it, well, that's just not the way I like to do it. So what I like to do instead is to go over to the second icon, which is our link icon. So now I have this long link and I can shorten it a little bit. Um, so now I have this link that I can share. If I wanted to, I could go out and make a bit.ly link of this. If I wanted to, I could go make a QR code, but at the very least, I have to have this link. Then once I have this link, I could post it on a website. I could put it in an email or a text message, and students could just tap on it and go straight to the quiz. Quizzes are, or Google Forms in general, are really mobile friendly. So if there's a way to get this to them on their phones, that's a totally great way for them to respond. So now I could copy that, and then I could share that link with whoever I wanted to have take the quiz. Um, and that is the basics of using Google Forms. There are other things like branching questions, where if I had answered, you know, do you like, do you want pizza or do you want apple pie? And you say, I want pizza. Then I could have a new question that says pepperoni or cheese. Um, that's advanced, and we'll get into that in a second video. Thank you for watching.